The graph of the velocity in meters per second of a particle moving along the y-axis from 0 to 9 is shown at right. All right. So this is a velocity graph. So let's mark that. This is a velocity graph right here. All right. The y-axis is in meters per second, and the x-axis is in seconds. Okay. So the x-axis is in seconds. The y-axis is in meters per second. It's velocity graph, and it's from 0 to 9, as you can see in the picture. All right. Now, it also says that it is going along the y-axis, which what that means is the y-axis goes like this. So you have a 0 here, you have positive 1, negative 1, and so forth. And so what's going to happen here is the particle is going up and down this y-axis in a vertical, so up and down, not left and right. So you have to watch out for that. Sometimes it does that um, in different problems. Okay, so I want the velocity of the particle at t equals 5. So that is basically just saying what's v of 5. Okay, so the velocity at 5, well, we go to the graph at 5, and that's the dot right there. So the velocity would be negative 2, because this is a velocity graph at 5, so the velocity at 5 is negative 2. And that would be meters per second. So that would be your answer to that one, negative 2 meters per second, which means it's going down at 2 meters per second there. Now with the speed at 5, well, the speed's different. The speed doesn't care about direction. So it still wants v of 5, but it wants the absolute value of v of 5 because it doesn't care about direction. Okay, so basically it would just be ignore the negative, so it would be absolute value of negative 2, which means ignore the negative. So that would be 2 meters per second would be the speed. So key thing is speed basically ignores negatives, and that's what absolute value means because speed doesn't care about direction, but velocity does. How many values of t is the particle at rest? For how many values of t is the particle at rest? So if we're talking about particle at rest, that means the velocity equals zero is what we're looking for here. So the velocity is zero there, 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 and all the way at the end at nine. All right. So, but it was how many times? So that looks like four times. So four. It hits at four times. So zero, three, six, and nine. If you want the exact times, it'd be zero, three, six, and nine would be them. But they didn't ask for that. So lastly, we want the acceleration at five. So that means the acceleration at five, which the acceleration at five is really the derivative of velocity at 5. All right, so what is the derivative of the velocity at 5? Well, that means the slope at 5. So there's the line right there, the kind of the uh, tangent line would be that slope. So if we go, that means we're going to go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. So that would be 2, and that would be meters per second squared, or meters per second per second. All right, we're continuing the last problem. It's Again, this is your velocity graph from 0 to 8. Um, looks like seconds. It's in meters per second. Okay, so for what values of t is the acceleration of the particle 2 meters per second per second? So if I want the acceleration being 2, all that's saying is I want this. All right, which is really just saying the derivative of velocity equaling 2 which means we're looking for the slope of the velocity graph being 2. So can you tell right here isn't the slope of that 2 and isn't the slope all of here 2? Aren't those two spots I wrote in, written in yellow, aren't those intervals for which the slope is 2? So look at the slope of that, rise, rise of 2 over 1. So my first answer, how, oh, for what values? That would be from 0 to 2 was one interval, and the other interval looks like from... 4 to 7. Okay, that would be an answer. You could also put 0 to 2 and 4 to 7. They're both doable notations. But those are the intervals for which the acceleration, which is the slope of velocity, is 2. Next, for what values of t is the particle traveling downward? Now remember, this particular problem was going up and down. It was on the y-axis. So downward means negative velocities. Downward would be negative velocities because it's going towards a negative direction of a y-axis. So what we're looking for here are velocities being less than zero, a.k.a. velocities being negative. 
So look at your graph. Can you see where velocity values or values of the graph are negative? And if you think about it, won't it be these spots in green? Won't all the spots in green are where the velocity, the function velocity, is negative? So what values are they? That would be from 3 to 6. Or you could write it as 3 to 6 this way. Either way, those are the time frames in seconds at which it's going downward. Downward is velocities negative. Next, I want change of direction. So if I'm looking for particle changes direction, well, to get a change of direction, you must stop first. And stop is 0. Your velocity is 0. So you must stop to change directions. And then second of all, you need your velocity to change signs, meaning change positive, negative, or negative, positive. So isn't our velocity equal to zero at these two points? I mean, yes, it is equal to zero on the edges as well. Isn't it equal to zero on the edges? But the edges, can you see the other side? No. So let's focus on, I'll, I'll describe it better in a second here, but look at three. Three isn't the velocity zero. And does the velocity change from a positive velocity to a negative velocity? And here, doesn't it change from a negative velocity to a positive velocity? So is velocity zero and changing signs at three and six? Yes, it is. So the answer would be at three and six seconds would be where it's changing signs, or, or sorry, the particle is changing directions. Now, yes, the velocity is zero here, but you can't tell the other side of this, can you? You can't tell if it actually changed directions. It just started it, not moving. And at the other end, you can't tell what is happening afterwards. So you don't know if it just stopped. It could have just stopped and be stopped. It could have stopped and turned around. It could have, we don't know what's happening. We didn't look past nine seconds. So we can't verify changes directions at the edges because we can't see the other side. But we can see these two spots did. Last particular question. Particle speeding up. So when I say speeding up, I'm saying the derivative of the absolute value of velocity is greater than zero. What I'm saying when I'm saying speeding up is I'm saying my speed is increasing. I want to know where the derivative, the slope of my speed is going up. My slope is increasing. It's, it's inc growing bigger. So that's what speeding up means. All right? There is another way to look at it as well. The other way that's very commonly done is if you look at the velocity, oops, let me take that back. If you do the velocity and the acceleration are to be speeding up, they should have the same sign. If the velocity and acceleration both have the same sign, it'll also be speeding up. Now, how do we know if it's slowing down if the signs are different? All right. How do we know if it's slowing down? Is if this is negative. So that's also how you should know slowing versus speeding up. So what we look at here, I'm going to first look at this way. I'm going to first look at this way. I think it's the easiest, even though AP likes this one more. The reason I think this is easy, let's think about this. What would the speed graph look like? Well, what a speed graph looks like is this graph, this might be confusing what I'm doing here, but what I did is I took this green graph and reflected it up. Because if you take this green graph and reflect it up, what you're doing is making it an absolute value function. An absolute value function takes all values below the x-axis and inverts it above the x-axis. It's what an absolute value does. That's what it, it changes all negative values into exactly the same positive values. So your graph for speed is really looks like this. That's your speed graph. It, goes, it doesn't go below. So if I'm looking for the slope or the derivative of speed is positive, I look for where the slope of my speed graph, the slope, the derivative, is positive. So now I go back to my problem, and I go, okay, where is my slope positive? So I'm going to use a highlighter this time. And if I look at it, it means blue. Can you see it's positive right there? Isn't the slope positive there? Isn't the slope positive there? And isn't the slope positive there? So all those spots right here, here, and here, is it the slope of the speed positive? So it's speeding up. So my answer is going to be on the interval 0 to 2, 3 to 4, and 
six to seven. I'm not gonna write the other notation. You guys got it. You could write this notation if you want. I'm gonna leave it those notations. That is where it's speeding up. Now let's check this idea. Let's check this idea. Ready? We want the velocity and acceleration being the same sign. So look right here. Isn't your velocity positive here? Aren't all those values of velocity positive? And aren't the slopes positive? Isn't the velocity values positive and the slope positive in this blue area? Now, instead of going up here, let's go back down here. Remember, we haven't flipped it yet. Isn't your velocity negative and isn't your acceleration negative or your slope of velocity negative? So aren't they both negative right here? The slope is negative and the values are negative. Look right here. Aren't the slope and the values both positive here? Do you see everywhere, all these intervals, this agrees and so does this. So you can look at it two different ways. I think this makes more sense. This is just memorizing some sort of random formula. I don't like it, but it's commonly used.